we are just four days away from a total solar eclipse crossing the entirety of the United States from south to north. And I, living nowhere near the path of totality, really want to go see this. Aside from me living nowhere near the path of totality, the biggest problem that we have right now is that the majority of the United States looks like it's gonna be cloudy. Unfortunately for us, the only place in the United States that looks like it's gonna be clear with 100% certainty is the Northeast. So I have this crazy idea of renting a car tomorrow and driving up north not really knowing exactly where we're going. Now, some of you would argue that I could just fly to my destination. However, with the eclipse quickly approaching, the prices for flights anywhere near the path of totality are way too expensive. And it's been like that for months ever since I first thought about wanting to go. Something else that's way too expensive? Hotel prices sold out across the board for the past couple of weeks. And when it comes to a total solar eclipse, I don't want to just pick one spot and stick to it months in advance. I know people from around the world who are flying in to the United States and they picked their designated location months ago, not knowing whether or not they would actually get to see the darn thing. So guys, with all that being said, it looks like we are in for quite an adventure. I'm gonna rent a car tomorrow and Coda and I, we are going to drive up north not really knowing where we're going. We have no plan. We have no hotels booked. We have no real idea of where exactly we're going to watch the Path of Totality, but I promise you, we are going to make it happen. Good morning, everybody. It is April 6th, 2024. It is currently five in the morning here in Tampa, Florida, and we are getting ready to hop in the car and head on out. As of right now, we've finalized our first stop of Hershey, Pennsylvania. But first, what's our actual first stop? Bucky's. Bucky's. <laughs> it's gonna be Coda's first time at Bucky's. We're gonna head to the one in Daytona before getting on I-95 and then just heading straight up north. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and head on into the car. The car is packed up and ready to go. We have some extra blankets over here that we got from Walmart. We have our suitcase with all our clothes. We have our lawn chairs for when we're actually out and watching the eclipse. We have an extra backpack over here. We have an air fryer from my parents because we are going to be stopping to see some family along the way and my parents wanted me to drop that off so that is that we're going to go ahead and close the trunk of our rental car on the inside over here we have our styrofoam cooler that is currently locked let me go ahead and open this up and show you guys what we have inside right now we just have some water bottles we have some protein shakes down at the bottom beneath our frozen water bottles that we stuck in our freezer last night and some bananas we are going to be loading this up with some additional snacks once we get to bucky's i have my bag over here with all of my camera equipment and then we have this bag over here that is full of comforters for us to sleep and have extra comfort and a few other miscellaneous items All right, sweetheart, we have made it to the promised land. Buggies, are you excited? Yes. <laughs> you were just laughing at the signs coming in about the dog poop. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I, didn't, I thought the first one was a joke, <laughs> and then it just got better. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you don't know, they have a very strict, like, no dog poop policy. If your dog does a poopy, you have to scoopy. Please do a scoopy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go inside. We yeah. both have to pee something fierce. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought you had to go to the bathroom, babe. <laughs> You're getting distracted. Why don't have these adults? <laughs> okay, we can't spend too long here. We have places to be. <laughs> there you go. Bucky swimsuit. Okay, for real though, if I was a bathroom, where would I be? <laughs> it's on the opposite side. <laughs> Alright, so we have our basket and, you know, just, we need to pack the essentials. <laughs> Seems fair. 
You've had these before. They're oh, delicious. They're so good. <laughs> we don't need this many right now, though. <laughs> we are going to be stopping at at least one more Bucky's on our way there. At least one more that we know of in South Carolina. But no, we don't. We we definitely know don't need this many right now, though. With preliminary snacks in hand, we topped off our rental car and proceeded north towards Georgia. The weather was absolutely gorgeous, and the traffic was light heading into the Peach State. We managed to cross this pretty tall bridge on our way through Jacksonville that Coda was less than enthused about going over. You good, babe? Yep. You can ease your grip on the steering wheel now. <laughs> I only cried 20 times. <laughs> now I love driving over bridges, but understandably, Coda is not as big of a fan, especially with recent events. As soon as we crossed the state line, we pulled into the Georgia Welcome Center rest stop, where we took our photo with the Welcome to Georgia sign and we made our first driver swap of the trip. Unfortunately, luck was not on our side once we got about halfway into Georgia, as we quickly ran into heavy traffic that was almost at a standstill at points, as there were a lot of vehicles heading north from Florida. Now, were all these snowbirds, families going home from spring break, or eager eclipse chasers? Possibly a good mix of the three. Sadly, our situation didn't get much better in South Carolina, with our GPS only giving us a minor break from the standstill traffic to navigate us around some back roads until we eventually had to get back in line. About four hours after we stopped in Georgia, we were only about halfway through South Carolina before we needed a pee break and Coda wanted to hop back in the driver's seat. All right, here we are in South Carolina. It's about another four hours later since we last swapped. When did we swap? That was at the Georgia border, right? Yeah, we swapped at the Georgia border. We hit a lot of traffic in Georgia and in South Carolina. We're at a rest stop right now. And oh my God. Coda and I, we've been, you know, doing four hour shifts. So now it's about Coda's turn to swap over. We came to a rest area. I really needed to be, so we're gonna go ahead and swap now. Road trips are fun though. I'm enjoying myself. I don't know about you. Like despite the traffic, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> Coda said, okay. <laughs> One quick pee break later, we were back on the road heading toward our next break area of Bucky's in Florence, South Carolina, where we would pick up some dinner and additional snacks for the evening drive. Now, we were originally scheduled to arrive in Florence at about 1 p.m., but the traffic in Georgia and South Carolina put us behind schedule by almost three and a half hours. This was really going to hurt us later in the day because our hotel was booked for the night in Hershey, Pennsylvania, which at the time was still over 500 miles away or eight hours without traffic. Leaving Bucky's, we knew we had a long night ahead of us. As as we approached the border to North Carolina, we passed by the worst tourist trap I've ever experienced, south of the border. Easily recognizable by the giant sombrero observation tower along the interstate, I would highly advise anyone driving this route to just steer clear and avoid this very poorly maintained roadside attraction. Just ignore all the million and one of the clever billboards you'll see along the way and just keep it moving. About halfway into North Carolina, I finally noticed something worth mentioning to anyone planning on making this drive. You know, initially I was pretty darn excited to, you know, be exploring some different States. I mean, granted, we've been to Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. Now we're in North Carolina. I guess you can say we're almost out of North Carolina. We're definitely more than halfway through. We're approaching Virginia right now. But all we've seen is trees. <laughs> Literally, all we've seen is trees. Different kinds of trees. And, like, nothing of interest at all have, have we been seeing. Like, other than, like, all of this, we got a bunch of knocked down trees over here but nothing, just all trees. Very boring, it got very boring very quickly. Once we got out of South Carolina and we stopped seeing Bucky signs and south of the border signs, nothing to look at, oh boy. Shortly after, we made our last driver stop of the night. We pulled off into another rest area in the northern half of North Carolina and I took the wheel for the remainder of the four and a half hour drive through Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. Now at this point, it was dark outside and having been up since 4 a.m., Coda decided to sleep and there wasn't much to see and film for the remainder of the drive that night. But finally, after almost 20 hours of driving, thanks to the traffic in the southern states, we made it to our hotel in Hershey, Pennsylvania, just after 1.30 a.m. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a minute since I have seen you guys, but it is just after 1.30 in the morning and we have finally made it to Hershey, Pennsylvania. We are very close to Hershey Park. We're staying at the Spring Hill Suite and I gotta say this place is really nice the gentleman at the front desk super nice super helpful unfortunately not gonna be doing a room tour or hotel review I mean like it's a king bed room it's pretty nice this is as much as you're really gonna get because we are so tired we just want to shower we just want to go to sleep we found out that breakfast is until 10 so we can sleep in until 9 30 we were gonna go to chocolate world in the morning before the park opened but that's not gonna happen if we have time at the end of the day then we will stop at chocolate world but we're gonna go to the park right at 
11 o'clock when they open in the morning. We're gonna go ahead and shower and go to sleep. I will see you guys in the morning. And here we are guys, we've made it to Hershey Park. Check this out. It has been 10 years since I've been here. This park is gonna be covered in its entirety in a completely separate video that you guys can check out later on the channel. But let's not waste any time guys, let's head on inside and have some fun. The following day, we had an absolute blast at Hershey Park. When planning our trip, we knew we wanted to head up north to the upstate New York region. And to get there, we saw we had to get close to Hershey, Pennsylvania. So right off the bat, we knew we couldn't pass up the opportunity to go and check out this incredible theme park. A full theme park vlog and Hershey Park test seat guide will be coming out on the channel very soon and our Patreon supporters will get early and ad free access to all of those videos including this one you're watching right now. If you want to help make videos like this possible and support the channel a little extra the link is in the description below where your name will also get a shout out mid video and appear in the credits at the end. This video wouldn't be possible without the support of my incredible patrons so I just want to thank you all for your incredible and generous support. After our amazing day at Hershey Park we had dinner at the all new Chocolatier restaurant in Chocolatier Town and continued the next leg of our journey up to our hotel in Albany, New York, and this is where the biggest speed bump of our trip occurred and the unthinkable happened. So it is currently 12.45 in the morning. We have made it to Albany, New York. We were supposed to be checking into our hotel tonight. We made this reservation rather late last night. This hotel has no record of our reservation. They don't have us in the system, period. And I have emails with a confirmation number. I have the charges on my account from the site that I booked it on. And they have no rooms available. And I can hear the kind lady in the back, the manager of this hotel. She's trying to call other hotels to see if there's a room available. And I, we've, we've heard her talk to like almost three different hotels now and there's no rooms available. We might be in trouble. It is now 1 a.m. and God bless this hotel employee, this manager. She is doing her absolute best to try and find us any kind of room right now that she can get comped. She's going down a list of hotels in the area and you know, there's obviously nothing tonight. She even tried the like Motel 8 or the Super 8 hotel that's like down the road and they wouldn't let her comp the room. She's trying to comp a room for us somewhere because, you know, it's something in their system that's wrong that, you know, let us book something and it obviously isn't there. And the Super 8 wouldn't let them <laughs> comp the room. And she's like, I'm not going to send you over there. The rooms are ridiculously overpriced. So she's really doing her best. And uh, and I appreciate the heck out of her for trying. But she says that worst case scenario, you know, she, she runs her audit in about an hour. And if there's any no-shows or cancellations, then she'll give us the room. Uh, we are about two hours, a little over two hours away from our final destination of Burlington. That's where we're gonna watch the eclipse today. Um, hopefully we can just get some kind of sleep because this has been a day. Uh, so it is almost 2.30 in the morning and as you guys can see, we finally have a room. The manager had to wait until a certain time before she finally called it for people who haven't checked in yet and basically list them as no-shows. So we were finally able to get a room. It is 2.30 in the morning now. We're still planning on being up relatively early-ish, waking up at seven to continue our journey the other two hours, but we're gonna go ahead and go to sleep. I'll see you guys in the morning. This has been an absolute nightmare. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Eclipse Day. 2024. It is just after 8 a.m. here in Albany, New York, and we are getting ready to hop in the car and make the final leg of our journey up to Burlington, Vermont. It's gonna take just under three hours to get there, so we're hoping to get there just before noon, and we're actually not gonna be watching the eclipse from the city. We're actually gonna be watching the eclipse from a different location that I hope works out and I hope is less crowded than the actual city of Burlington. I'll explain more when we actually get there and explain my thought process, but 
for now, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get everything else packed up and hop in the car and get going. We were just three and a half hours away from our final destination of Burlington, Vermont, which we had only decided the day before would be our final total eclipse viewing destination of our journey. After getting a full four hours of sleep, we hopped in our car at 8.30 in the morning to join thousands of our closest friends in heading up north for the full totality experience. We traveled the back roads of upstate New York and saw some of the most incredible scenery I've ever seen outside of Alaska in the lower 48. It was truly a breathtaking drive for this born and raised Floridian who doesn't get much exposure to mountains, or really any other elevation changes for that matter. We even saw an Amish horse-drawn buggy, something I've never seen out in the wild before. And finally, with just three hours to spare, we made it to our final destination. <sighs> okay guys, after 1500 miles of driving through Florida, through, what was it? Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. We are now in Vermont. We are like, how many, how close are we to the border? 40 minutes. 40 minutes to the Canadian border. And we have found ourselves right outside of Burlington, Vermont. And we found a Costco. <laughs> We found a Costco. This is where we are going to be setting ourselves up for the eclipse today. I'm 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 just shocked that we made it this far and that we're actually here. <laughs> this is actually wild. But I'm super happy because the clouds are very very thin. Like over there, perfectly clear skies and we just have some very high level clouds that are like super thin so you can see right through. We can see the sun perfectly fine so I think that this is going to be a fantastic spot. Like I said earlier in the video guys, the rest of the country was looking very iffy and up here in the northeast was pretty much the only surefire spot to like get the most clear view of the eclipse. You know, everywhere else in the country was a crapshoot. So I'm very happy that we're here. We have about, what, what time is it right now? It's 1.25, the eclipse starts at about 2.15. That's when the moon will start touching the sun and totality will begin at about 3.30. So we will be sure to keep you guys updated, but let's go ahead and show you guys our setup. So this is our setup. We have our two chairs. You know, you can guess which one's mine, which one's Koda's. Got a tripod set up for this big camera over here to face the sun. I have my G7X down there to record our reactions as it's happening. And I also have the Insta set up over here. The, the actual camera is not on there, but the pole is gonna be there to get a 360 view, more or less, of everything that's going on. I'm debating on whether or not I put it on top of the car when the eclipse actually starts. I might actually end up doing that to get more of a higher up view and you can see the rest of the parking lot. But yeah, speaking of the parking lot, it is empty. It is very empty. I don't think I've ever seen a Costco parking lot this empty. Do you guys wanna know what Coda did to me not too long ago? Because it snowed here in Vermont rather recently. You can see a little bit of the snow behind me over there. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and roll the clip. I will pour this out. What? I will pour this out. Stay away. I will pour. After everything I've done for you this trip, I need Q-tips now. <laughs> Give me a Q-tip. So yeah, as you guys can see, Coda has a problem where okay. she likes to throw snow at people. If you guys watched our Alaska videos, then you know that she likes to throw snow. And she got me square in the ear. <laughs> Pretty good. She's She's got a wicked aim on her, so yeah. That's what I gotta deal with today. <laughs> Just after 2.15 p.m. and we have first contact. I have my camera pointed up at the sky. I have a solar lens on it and you can see it. Oh my gosh. I don't have the greatest zoom lens in the world, but this is enough. This is working out beautifully. So the gentleman that's next to us actually pointed something out that I hadn't really noticed until now. The temperature's starting to drop. <laughs> That is actually kind of wild. Like, yeah, yeah, it was pretty warm outside earlier when we first got here. And now that the eclipse has started, we're about, like, what would you say, looking up at it, like 30% there? As the sun gets more and more covered by the moon, 
starting to get a little bit cooler. So there's a couple things I want to point out. Number one, I downloaded an Eclipse app that like sends you notifications based on your location every time something happens or every time you should be paying attention to something. So 30 minutes until second contact, I believe that's totality. Um, it says uh, observe ambient temperature and yeah, it is definitely getting a lot colder. Another thing that I want to observe is that it is getting a lot dimmer. It's so weird, it's like someone turned down the contrast of the world around you. It's so weird. It's almost like the sun is getting ready to set, but not really. It's really weird. Like, if you've ever edited pictures and you turn down the contrast, that's kind of what I can best compare it to. I don't know how well you guys can tell, but it has gotten really dim outside. Holy cow. Coda's trying to take some pictures with, with her phone. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> crazy. Just got another alert on the app, on the Eclipse app, and it says to observe animal behavior. So there's hardly any birds out right now when there were a lot earlier. But we have some woods back here behind us, and we can hear crickets now. Like, they're active in there, and frogs. They're active. I don't know if you guys can pick that up or hear it, but we can, the woods are definitely active right now. That is crazy. My heart is like pounding right now. I don't know why I have anxiety right now. It's just, you feel so small. You know, this this is definitely something that puts your entire being and existence in per, into perspective. Just how microscopic you are in this, in this world, in this universe. Stupid, did it again. <laughs> Stop looking at the sun. <laughs> it's dark in here. <laughs> well, I'm like, I can't see anything. Let me look underneath the glasses. <laughs> You'll find it eventually. <laughs> it's crazy. Look at every, yeah, they must have let their employees stand outside. Oh, yeah, all the Costco employees are standing outside. That's so cool. Look how dark it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I know this camera doesn't do it justice, but it is so dark. I just looked at the sun. It is so dark. It, it looks a lot brighter in the camera. I'm cold. I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm very cold, but... <laughs> oh my god. We are just about there. We are just about there. Babe, mm -hmm. look around. I know, it's so dark. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. You scared of the dark? No, I'm not, <laughs> not scared of the dark, but this is just the most amazing, amazing thing. Oh, oh my God, oh my God, not yet, it's not yet. You can't look at it yet. Take off your glasses, take off your glasses. Don't look directly at it yet. Oh, <laughs> my dumb ass, I'm already staring at it. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. oh my god, look at that. Am I allowed to look at it? <laughs> yes, you're allowed to look at it now, baby. <laughs> it's so dark. Oh my gosh, look around us. It's like sunset, sunrise, all the way around us. <laughs> this is the coolest. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, you can, can't read Costco, but you can see the ring from a distance. You can see a, a mass ejection. You can see one of the solar flares. Uh, see at yeah. the very bottom? Yeah. You can see a solar flare. Oh my god. I can't. I can't. You can see stars too? Yeah, the stars are all out. A few more, but. <laughs> I'm, I, I have tears. I have tears coming down my face. 
Wow. Shy's outside with the spaghetti strainer. <laughs> Did you get a couple of good close-up mm -hmm. pictures? Yeah. I can't wait to see them. Baby, I can't believe we did this. We drove 1,500 miles. 1,500 miles for this. The birds do be freaking out. 100% worth it. 1,500 miles. Almost 24 hours of driving time. Just to be up here to see this. It's like a red little dot, that flare. Yeah, I, the red <laughs> little dot is a flare, it looks like. At least I'm assuming it is. Can I see anything else? Nope. <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is the wildest thing, just the corona around it. <laughs> you can see it's starting to come back. Yeah. It's starting to come back over here. It's starting to get a little bit brighter. This is a moment I'm never gonna forget. This is the one one of the coolest things you could ever do. You can see it's starting to come back. Yeah. Now. So your phone's gonna go off? I'm oh, about to get there blinded. Is. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Oh, <laughs> where'd my glasses go? I lost my glasses. It's fine. Oh, I put them down over here. Oh, you have glasses back on. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> and just like that, totality's over. <laughs> and just like that, totality is over. <laughs> 1,500 miles, 24 hours of driving, just for three and a half minutes of totality. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put the filter back on the camera. Yeah, the birds are going absolute. The birds are going absolutely wild. <sighs> I am shaking. <laughs> I can't believe that. I cannot believe we did this. You can hear the birds. Do you hear the birds? The crickets stopped. Yeah, the crickets did stop. We're Forty minutes. <laughs> Oh my god. All the Costco employees went back inside. They like shuttered the whole store <laughs> so that way they could come out. That was, that's really nice. I'm, I'm glad that they were able to experience that, but oh my god. <laughs> I'm a big baby. <laughs> Well, sweetheart, we came, we saw, we conquered from the Costco parking lot here in Burlington, Vermont. There was a mosquito on me. <laughs> that was wild. That was insane. A once in a lifetime thing. The next eclipse in the US isn't, isn't gonna be until 2044, I believe, or 2045. But I can't, I, I already can't wait until that one. That is gonna be absolutely insane. Like, I, I have to see it again. I have to and see it again. It's supposed to totality in Florida. Oof, that would be amazing if it really does. But anyways, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video, following along on this huge journey from us starting our journey off in Tampa, Florida, driving through the entire country from south to north to almost the Canadian border. But yeah, this was an absolutely wild ride. I would do it all over again. I would do it all over again if it meant seeing totality the way we did. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought about today's video. Huge shout out and thank you once again to our Patreon supporters. We love each and every single one of you. Literally, it's because of you guys that we were able to do this. And I could not be any more thankful and indebted to you guys. But anyways, enough of that. I hope you're all having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening. And I'll see you guys in the next video.